Good afternoon. Let me begin by sharing a story with all of you. This is a story about a teenage girl, an intelligent girl, a sports person, an NCC cadet, coming from a small town in Bihar. And like most girls of that age in college, she was pursuing her dreams. Till one day, some youth started stalking her. Every time she would go out from her house, come back, these youths were waiting for her, and they would sometimes physically, verbally, you know, make advances. For a few months, she took it thinking that seeing no response from her side, the youths may give up. It didn't happen. Her parents also went and spoke to the boy's father, mentioned about the incidents which is happening. But from there on, things got worse. And the youth threatened her that she would be taught a lesson. It was a sultry April night, and like most people in small towns do, they sleep outside in the courtyard, they sleep on the terrace, you know, to escape the heat. It was exactly midnight when a shrieking and screaming girl woke up and those all around her. And she shrieked and screamed till her lungs gave way and she collapsed. This girl had been attacked by acid. In few seconds, the acid dissolved her skin. She lost her eyesight. She became deaf. Uh, she had problem in her windpipe. Most of her upper part of the body was burnt. So at that moment, this girl, Shonali Mukherjee's life changed forever. Her parents sold off everything, you know, their house, their cattle, whatever assets they had to look after more than the 20, 30 surgeries she had to undergo. And then finally when they had no money to look after her surgeries anymore, and she could take the physical pain, and also coupled with, uh, you know, the, her day-to-day uh, going to the court, trying to bring her perpetrators to justice. Her plea to the government of India at that time, give me justice or let me die, woke up the consciousness of the administration and what the acid attack in front of the world stage. From that moment onwards, donations came, help came, assistance came. She was also a part of one of India's biggest quiz contest, where she won 25 lakhs, assisted by a former Miss Universe. Amitabh Bachchan called her the epitome of courage for a fight for survival. Today, Shonali Mukherjee has a government job. She married an engineer, a man who came forward after listening to her story. And she's a mother of a baby girl. That is what a true survivor is. Chonali is a true survivor. And she's not the only one. There are many like her, victims of acid attack, who have sort of made, rehabilitated themselves, made their life. But there are many who didn't make it and many who are still struggling. So what is an acid attack? Acid, it's a deliberate act of throwing acid on somebody, not to kill, but to maim, disfigure, to sort of, you know, uh, make sure that, uh, you know, they are not in a position to lead a normal, uh, uh, normal lives in their daily uh, routine. 
In India, 80% of the acid attacks happens against women. So it is a gender-based violence. Out of that 80%, 40% are people under the age of 18 or 19. Under the age of 18 or 19. And guys, you know, when I'm looking at my audience over here, is that the age profile we are talking about? Once an acid attack happens, it's not only the physical part, you know, which is attacked, but it's also the psychological part. It's the mental trauma one goes through. So can you imagine that the first time when the victim sort of recovers and looks at the mirror for the first time, what is her reaction? Who is that stranger I'm looking at? I don't recognize that person. Well, uh, what, and, uh, I also want to say what is the reason? Why is as attack so common now, especially in India? Well, there are various uh, ways of saying that, okay, you know, this acid attack is for a particular reason. But our research shows that most of the acid violence is basically due to the fact of spurning of either a sexual advance or a marriage proposal. You know, where the guy thinks that, all right, if you think you are so, you know, beautiful or you're so and so, I'll teach you a lesson. So that is the reason why acid attack, you know, is sort of uh, commonly used to teach women a lesson. Our government hospitals, you know, when they go for treatment, once the acid victim survives, once they have treated her for any life-threatening uh, this thing, then she is left to fend for herself, which means that you know, her windpipe may be damaged, she may not be able to swallow food, her skin may be joined together, and she has lost mobility, her eyesight she cannot see. So she is left to fend for herself. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, very uh, troublesome journey for that person. Why is also acid attack so common? I mean, you know, we only hear about those that is reported in the media, but there's a lot which goes unreported. The reason also is that the easy availability of the so-called acid of the shell, nitric, sulfuric, you know, I mean, you go to any Kirana store, they are sold as, uh, you know, cleaners, as toilet cleaners, which people buy and use it at their homes. Now, these are strong chemicals. I mean, one can easily look at, you know, buying something which is a little more gentle and that kind of thing, or the government should ensure that, you know, these assets are not sold off the shelf. Of course, they have enacted uh, laws to regulate the sale, but there is no way it is being implemented. It's still freely available. People can just buy it and, you know, use it for whatever purposes they feel like. My journey with acid survivors started about five years back. I was also in a corporate job. I was working. And like many people in the 50s, you know, one starts wondering that, have I achieved everything? Yeah, sure, in my corporate goals, more or less, I had. But there was a very deep sense of dissatisfaction inside me that, have I done enough? I mean, have I fulfilled my social responsibilities? And, you know, that answer kept nagging me. So when I had this opportunity from this organization called Asset Survivors Foundation India, which is an organization working to rehabilitate asset victims across the country, I grabbed it. I said that maybe this is an opportunity of, you know, somehow giving from my side. And I had never met an asset survivor before in my life. I didn't 
you know, maybe I'd seen some pictures of theirs in the media, you know, when it was being reported, but I'd never met a one-to-one -one with an asset survivor. And my first experience, when I called about five or six of them to my office, to sort of hear their stories, to learn more about themselves, that was a life-changing experience. You know, all of them, firstly, of course, all of them needed assistance to sort of come in because of certain disabilities due to the violence. But all of them came in, they all had a smile on their face. They all had a smile on their face, and I could see that there was no bitterness in them. You know, that, you know, why me? Nothing like that. The only thing is that, you know, when they felt a little upset was because of the delayed justice. The system in India, you know how it works. So that's the only time, you know, they felt a little, you know, that things have not gone according to, you know, the way it should have. So since then, we have, in our own small way, tried to rehabilitate a lot of them. The medical rehabilitation, getting them free surgeries, uh, training and skilling them, all of them. And this is another thing which I would like to sort of uh, say. All of them said the same thing, that we do not just look for charity, we do not wish to be a burden on anyone. Give us gainful employment or skill us or train us so that we can look after ourselves. And that's what we are two survivors are. A very interesting uh, experience for me has been, again, a young girl, like I said, that most of them are young girls. She was also about 17, 18, a student of a fashion design institute, doing very well for herself. And not only that, she was so good looking that she was also doing modeling on the side. Until one day, she got attacked by acid. She had to undergo more than 50 surgeries. Her father, who was a government servant, you know, again, had to undergo a lot of uh, trouble financially to sort of ensure. But this girl never gave up. She completed her fashion designing from India's best fashion institute. After completing that, she went and got admission into Parsons, New York. Acknowledged as the world's best fashion school, college in the world. And today, Monica Singh is making news in New York. She's doing well in New York. She's been covered by the world media. Uh, you know, her story has been splashed all across uh, the world. And soon she's going to make waves in the fashion world. So these are good experiences, you know, that one has also encountered uh, during my journey with asset survivors. All of you uh, also, you know, today may be pursuing your dreams with empty pockets like, you know, the theme of this whole uh, talk is. But tomorrow when you guys have achieved your dreams, your aims and ambition in life, when you are successful in the corporate world, as businessmen, as entrepreneurs, as professionals, grab every opportunity that comes your way. Make the most of it. But when it comes, do your bit also for that opportunity deprived in individual. Because they are out there, they are also looking for somebody to hold their hand, support them, and show them the way. You know, uh, talking about survivors is an emotional subject, because when you deal with them, it, it's a human, uh, you know, it's a human relationship. You become close to them also. You know, a lot of them become like your family members. You know, I get calls and, and, uh, and, and it's not calls always for, you know, that, you know, I want this help, I want a small thing that, you know, I've made a birthday, hai, you know, aaj hum yahan ja rahe wo ja rahe you know, all that, aaj hum ye picture dekh ke aaye. So, you know, these are small moments of happiness in their life. 
and it gives you a great sense of satisfaction. So, what I want to say is that, you know, wherever you are, money is very important because, you know, that's how the world works and you need money for charity also. So look after your family, look after yourself, look after, you know, your near and dear ones. But once you have done that, and if you have, if God has given you, you know, an opportunity to help others, please go and do that. And it doesn't mean, I mean, I'm not only talking about, you know, from my side for asset victims or asset survivors and that kind of thing. There are many opportunities in the world to do that. Uh, you, you know, uh, a, a lot of uh, things can also come from the younger generation because you are the guys tomorrow who are going to, you know, sort of push this country forward. You know, that you're going to, you know, sort of move how we are going to be in the world tomorrow. It is very important to look at compassion, to look at, uh, you know, generosity. Because these are also things which are good for your health. You know, giving, you know, it creates a good sense of well-being within you. You will feel nice. You will feel good. And maybe that sort of balances your work life uh, with other things. It's not only just about, you know, pursuing, a, you know, going on a journey and just looking at that final destination. The fun is also in the journey itself. Okay, so stop, look around you, you know, maintain a good work-life balance with your family, with your friends, with your hobbies, with your passion, music, arts, meditate, pray, you know, do whatever. But take time out for yourself and for others. So I started with the story. Let me end it with the proverb. It's an old ancient proverb which says that if you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. You want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. But if you want happiness for a lifetime, help others. I wish you well in your dreams, in pursuing your dreams. Thank you so much.